How would you sketch the graph of some rational function? A little bit more messy than just a polynomial, it's some polynomial divided by another polynomial. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Well, the first thing we can do is we can immediately recognize that this is undefined, this is undefined when, when you have x equal to minus 3. So you can, you can immediately think that whatever the graph's going to look like for this guy, I know that at minus 3, it's undefined. Okay, great. Make a note of that. We can then go in and start looking at some limiting behavior. Uh, as before with the polynomials, we know that if you look at the limit as x goes to infinity or the limit as x goes to minus infinity, that tells what the graph is doing as you move to the left or to the right. As x goes to infinity, my limit is, well, let's think. As you plug in really big numbers, the plus 3 doesn't really matter, so it's just x over x, which has a limit of 1. And same thing for, for minus infinity. Plug in a really big negative number or a really big negative number, that's also going to be going to 1. This tells us that as we, as we go far out to the left and to the right, we'll be getting closer and closer to the line 1. So, so we may be, we may be coming down to it or going up to it or we're kind of oscillating to coming down onto it, but, but you're coming closer to where y equals 1. There's one other place we should think about the limiting behavior, and that's this undefined point where x was equal to minus 3. Let's think about what happens as we get closer and closer to minus 3 from the left. What's the limit as x approaches minus 3 from the left? So, so now I'm plugging in values a little bit smaller than minus 3. And you can think about what's going to happen. Here on top, I'm going to have a number a little bit smaller than minus 3. And then here I'm going to have minus 3 plus 3, so a little bit smaller than 0. Both will be negative, so when you divide, you're going to be getting a positive number. But since it's a number divided by something going to 0, it's going to go off to infinity. And that tells us it's going off to positive infinity. So as I approach minus 3 from the left, I know that I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to positive infinity. As, as I come to minus 3 from the right, the limit as x approaches minus 3 from the right of my function, a little bit bigger than uh, minus, minus 3, a little bit bigger than minus 3, some number on top, a little bit bigger than minus 3 plus 3. This is a positive number now, a number a little bit bigger than 0. And so what do I get? Well, I have a negative number divided by a number a little bit bigger than 0. It's going to be a negative number because it's a positive on bottom and negative on top. But it's going to be going off to 0, uh, going off to infinity. So this is going to be going down to minus, minus infinity. Minus infinity. Okay, great. Now that we have these limits dealt with, we can begin thinking about what does the first and second derivative tell us? So let's go ahead and calculate some of those. Let's find the first derivative of this function. Since it's a quotient, we'll need to use the quotient rule. Hold the bottom, times it by the derivative of the top, which is just 1, minus hold the top, times it by the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1, all divided by the bottom squared, x plus 3 squared, which simplifies to just 3 over x plus 3 squared. We'll go ahead and we'll make our number line trying to note any critical values of x. So anywhere where the derivative is 0 or not defined. Well, this fraction is never 0. It's only going to be 0 if the top is 0, but, but the top is 3, so it can never be 0. But it is undefined at the point minus 3. So at minus 3, this is undefined. And that's no surprise since the function itself isn't even defined at minus 3. So of course its derivative is undefined there. But then we can think, okay, what happens if I put in a number that is smaller than minus 3? So, so let's put in something like minus 4 into this derivative. Minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1, but when I square it, it becomes positive 1. 3 divided by 1 is a positive number. So it's increasing. So I know whatever my function looks like, it's going, to be, it's going to be increasing before I get to minus 3. And then after minus 3, if I plug in something like minus 2 or minus 1 or even just 0, 
I get zero plus three, that's three, squared is nine, three divided by nine, that's just one third, it's pretty small, but, but it's still a positive number, so I'm increasing again. So, so I also know that over here on the right hand side, I'm increasing again. So I'm increasing, and then it's undefined at three, at x equals minus three, and then I'm increasing, increasing again. The last piece of information we need is information about concavity. How is the graph bending up or bending down? And so for that, we'll calculate the second derivative, f double prime of x. So we need to find the derivative of this derivative. Well, I can conceive of this derivative as just being three times x plus three to the minus two. So I don't even need to use quotient rule. I can just use my power rule. The second derivative is the minus two comes down to give me minus six times x plus three to the minus three, because I decreased it by one, decreased minus two by one, which is the same thing as minus six over x plus three cubed. If I go ahead and look what's going on there on a, on a low number line, here I am at my x value of minus three, and then I want to look at what the second derivative is. Well, the at minus three, it's undefined. Just as before, as a critical value, it's undefined. It's, it's not defined at minus three. The function itself isn't even defined there, but neither are its derivatives. And, and then we can look at some other values. If I'm smaller than minus three, like minus four, and I plug it in, I get minus one. Minus one cubed is still minus one, but minus six divided by minus one is positive six. It's a positive number. So I'm increasing. I'm sorry, I'm concave up. We're doing second derivative. So positive means I'm concave up. My graph should be bending upwards when I'm smaller than minus three. So my graph should be bending, have a positive concavity when I'm, when I'm less than minus three. When I'm more than minus three, like negative one or negative two or, or, or even at zero, plug that in, I get minus six over three cubed, negative divided by positive is a negative number, so I have negative concavity, I'm concave down. So my graph should be bending down after I'm at minus three. How are we gonna put this all together? Okay, we know my function is increasing and concave up, and it's gonna be shooting off to infinity as I get to minus three, and it's going down to one as I go to the left. All that together tells you I look something like this, right? I'm concave up, notice how I bend, so I'm concave up. Notice I'm increasing, it's going bigger, 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 increasing. Notice how as I go to the left, as x goes to minus infinity, mean closer and closer to the line, y equals one. And as I get closer and closer, x equals minus three, I'm going up to infinity. How about on the other side? Well, I still wanna be getting closer to one as I go off to infinity. I want to be getting closer to negative infinity. I'm going to be going down arbitrarily small as I come to minus three. I want to be concave down and increasing. Put that all together and the picture you get is something like this. Something like that. Okay, very good. You know, you can go ahead and plug in a few points if you want to be more exact. Plug in a point like zero, when x equals zero, the function should be zero, so I should pass to this point zero, zero. But I think, I think we get the idea that the general picture of the graph, the, the, the general shape of it resembles, resembles this.